Good morning, Carl here, and we're going to be talking about sustainability theory and today's news in the world of sustainability. The lead story is at the Walden effect. There's a root cellar that stays cold in the summer. They use butane heat exchanger, where they have a little bit of some copper piping above ground, goes below ground, and then the butane circulates through copper pipes in water reservoirs, and that just takes the heat right out of that water. It's almost like a uh, passive refrigerator, if you will. And you uh, basically create a root cellar, you know, shelves here, movable wall of insulation, and then you get your water tanks right here. Next story is about eco-villages and sustainable communities throughout Europe. Uh, this is from the Natural Building blog, and it's a summary of a documentary called A New We. And it goes over about a dozen different global eco-villages and sustainable communities throughout the world and mostly Europe. Next story, video over at YouTube. We must include local people to cut poverty. And this is from the Center for International Forest Forestry Research. Now, of course, for uh, most of us, it seems like that's common sense. Of course, we can't have a top-down approach to poverty elimination. It has to be a grassroots movement from the bottom up. Over at the World Agroforestry Center, there's a story about a $5,000 grant opportunity for agripreneurs, uh, people that work in the supply chain, production, value-added services like processing and storage, can apply to get this $5,000 grant and includes a uh, trip to South Africa and involvement in panel discussions. Also from the Agroforestry Center, the World Agroforestry Center, is a report on 40 years of community-based forestry. Now this is where local communities work together with major governments to figure out the best plan for their local forests. That includes gathering firewood for sale, other timber products for sale, and of course producing food in a forest environment. Next up from Civil Eats is a communal meat locker in upstate New York that could help sustainable meat. Now the principle is, you know, simple. You have a bunch of farmers raising different meat. They need a place to store it. And maybe the local butcher shop doesn't have enough room. You, it, you could get together and form a co-op to create a communal meat locker. Or you could try and lobby local governments to fund it for you. Over from Science Daily... Warmer water leads to respiratory distress in aquatic animals. This is especially for people who are raising fish or raising fish and plants in an aquaponics environment. Now, you need to keep that water temperature low for nutrient absorption in the plants, but the warmer the water is, the more oxygen fish will need to absorb, and it could put them into fatal respiratory distress. From Permaculture Magazine, Looks like there's some supermarkets in Germany who are going to start branding things with permaculture. So that's great. It gives people an opportunity to buy things that were raised in a permaculture environment. Hopefully we can see that in the States as well. Oh, this is a documentary I just heard about called Open Sesame, the Story of Seeds. You know, it looks pretty nice. If anyone's seen it and has any comments, please comment below. From The Modern Farmer... Is, talks about Africa's orphan crops, or little utilized crops. Now, this includes companies like Google, University of California, World Wildlife Fund, Mars. All sorts of big companies are trying to get together to save these neglected crops because we need to have greater biodiversity if we're going to have a productive agricultural industry. Again, for a modern farmer, 10 smart ways to garden on a budget. Now, these are just nice little tips and tricks for both small-scale and large-scale organic operations. It talks about seed swapping, taking cuttings, repurposing and upcycling, foraging for supplies, design yourself, oh, and of course, a pop-up. Gotta have a pop-up. And, you know, making your own soil amendments and several other things. You might want to check out that article. Links are below. And finally is a nice infographic from Urban Organic Farmer, or Urban Organic Gardener rather, talking about the benefits of mulch versus no mulch. Of course, you lose a lot of water retention if you don't have mulch. And there's a nice infographic below. It talks about the benefits of different kinds of mulch, pine straw for acid-loving crops. 
grass clippings. You can get them pretty cheap and easy, as well as leaves. Newspaper, I'm not so sure about that with the dyes and whatnot, but some people love it. Compost and wood chips. Now, if you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them below, and have a great day.